with young girls and women around the world on building their self-esteem and self-love and teaching them emotional intelligence in uh, in the workplace and throughout their education, because I think it's imperative in order for you to be successful in life, you have to love you first. And so I I work with Dove with the Self Esteem Project um, and the Obama Foundation, traveling all around the world to teach this ab- amazing movement to women and girls. Excellent, good to have you, Kiana. Thank you. So I figured we we kind of have maybe four or five. Uh, Parts we're going to discuss on uh, different dangers, how we can protect or disable those dangers. The first I wanted to focus on is probably one of the biggest concerns, or <laughs> now more than ever, in most danger of being sullied, is our reputation. So when it comes to uh, young entertainers who are either uh, thinking of going in the entertainment space or in it, or even are just in the influencer space, these these same principles apply. Uh, What things can uh, a young entertainer do to protect their reputation? Or where might get, if they're not careful and take a misstep, where might their their reputation get sullied in the industry? Well, I mean, I think social media is a place that we can definitely start the conversation. Um, I know for a fact that when actors are up for jobs, Um, assistance of casting offices and the production companies, they look up social media. The same way uh, executives who are getting ready to take on a job, people look to see what kind of person they are. So it's very important to make sure that who you're depicting on social media, even if you're young and even if you're having fun with your friends, that you're also understanding that if this is an industry in which you really want to be involved, then you need to be very cautious about the types of photos that you um, that you put up and the kind of conversations that you're having. Because not only are your peers looking at it, but also the people with whom you may want to work one day. And so, you know, and the other part of that discussion is um, the kinds of people who lurk behind the scenes um, and prey upon young people. And, you know, there's been so many conversations about, you know, older people pretending that they're young or, you know, there's never a situation where you should be tweeting with people and then meeting them. I mean, I think that's the most important piece that, yeah. you know, it's very cool and it's known and, and networks want their young stars to interact with their fans and promote their shows through their social media, but it should really all begin and end there and not be something that is taken into the personal. Very true. I'll piggyback off of what Tina said too, at, you know, as a studio teacher, making sure that when you are on set that you just use your manners, right? Like, please, thank you, cleaning up after yourself, um, being aware that you are in a work, you're at work, right? So sometimes we forget that because entertainment is so fun and we're making TV and we're making movies and there's craft services and there's just so many fun things, but we just have to remember our manners, right? And not expecting that you can just leave your lunch or your snack bag left. It's remarkable. So I know those are simple things, but it's remarkable how the little things also do go a long way. Um, right. on that front as well. And I second everything that Miss Tina said. Yeah, and not just the, the, the head honchos, the directors, the producers, your manners with them, but even everyone. the crew members, the people behind the scenes, be kind to everyone. Everyone. It's so important in what you're saying, Andre, because the thing is, is that those people also talk. They are the ones that you'll be very surprised how someone has a relationship with the director and there's a new person then saying, oh, we're thinking about working with so-and-so and they can say, oh my God, they're so rude or they're, you know, they you know, never say hello. And the thing is, is that the good news about being young on a set is that you have a built-in forum for education. Every crew member there, every person who's doing a job, whether it's a gaffer or a um, set decorator or a wardrobe person, they have a story. And you know, a lot of people, like Christopher said, you know, he was a young actor who then became a director that became a lot of different things. And it's like on the set schooling. And so if you welcome those people every day and that you're nice to the the extras who are working on that set, because I've known many an extra who've become a very, you know, an actor 
you know, and who will remember that actor, you know, thought that they were bigger than them. I mean, you have to just understand there's a level playing field. We're all doing the same thing together. And if you're a team player and you're nice to everyone, it's like, you know, people say honey draws more, you know, you know, flies than anything else. So be kind. <laughs> flies, bees. Yeah. <laughs> be kind uh, to one another. I would also, I would also add that uh, one of the things that's really important is if you notice that you're having problems or there's something that's unusual on a set or in a situation like that, to report it to your team so that your team can help you, that be your manager, your agent, your lawyer. I deal with this all the time and assert your rights. And if you, if you feel that something's awkward or things aren't going your way, um, as everyone's saying, you know, that could hurt your reputation. So sometimes it's best to you know, talk to the powers that be on a particular production to say, hey, this isn't going my way. How can, how can we help or have your team do that? Because you can assert your rights and protect yourself that way too. But I think it's really important that you use your team because there have been many a parent in their vigilance to protect their child or you know, you know, who've gone off on whatever and you don't want that either. You always want to be right. the good guy and you want your manager, your agent, your attorney to be the bad guy. You know, you happen to mention something in passing. We're the ones that are making a deal out of it, not you, because that's another way in which, you know, people are not always gracious on the other side. And they can also take that against you if it's coming across the wrong way. You always want to maintain, you know, an equal playing field. But you also want when something's happening, tell your people because they'll be the, your advocates. <laughs> And also, I'll, and on that note too, if you are a minor and you have a studio teacher, I tell my parents and my teachers all the time, make me the, I'm the bad guy. I can, when it comes to a child who is working in the entertainment industry, the studio teacher, we have the say, I have the power just to say, well, this isn't working for us. We're going to change this because we are working for the Department of Labor Standards Enforcement. So I report to the state. So if there is a problem, we'll, we'll handle it. You know, and the kids don't have to worry about it so much, but what Tina was saying about parents too, and it just clicked with me, Tina, I work with Dallas Young all the time. I love Dallas. And so when I was on the big show show you had came to, it just all hit me. Um, but so anyway, using your team, using the studio teacher, that's what we're there for. And um, let us be the bad guys. It's not, it doesn't have to come from the parent or the child. But so yeah. talking about the, the in regards to some of the children, they have to understand that not only do they use their voice, but they can use their voice and don't look at it as though they are complaining by speaking up for themselves or that they're going to upset if they come to the adults that, you know, are there, if you guys are there to protect them, then it's okay if you're feeling uncomfortable to say you're uncomfortable. Because if not, then what you're going to do is suppress those feelings, suppress those emotions, and then you're gonna project them out in a negative way. And people that you're working with are gonna think you have a bad attitude or you're upset when in all circumstances, you've been holding on to these emotions because you don't want it, you're scared to vocalize them because you don't wanna come off as a complainer. That's a really good point. Important. Go ahead, Chris. It's also important to, to know um, if, if the feeling that you have about something that's going on on set uh, is a feeling or if there's actually a real problem and real problems need to be reported. And because, you know, it has to do with legality. And if, if a child is not being treated properly according to the child labor laws, then that's a legitimate problem. And that is where the parent or guardian can interface directly with the studio teacher, with the agent and manager, and let them handle that. So I just want to reiterate that, that um, rather than the parent being the bad guy or the kid being the bad guy, um, that you do utilize the team, but you don't want to come off sounding whiny or complaining. You have mm -hmm. to go to them and say, look, this, these are the things that are happening. These are the facts and take detailed notes. So um, particularly the parents, should be if, if there's a problem on set, uh, they should take detailed notes, contemporaneous notes about what's going on um, to be able to use that as, as a log to say, you know, at 9.36 a.m. or, uh, you know, um, this, this 
was said to the child and we feel it's inappropriate or we're going beyond the eight hours that is allowed for the child to be there or Ooh. they didn't get their required amount of schooling that day wow. um yeah. you know but and so all of those things are are important and um you know it's so important like yes like lauren um and other studio teachers they have the power to enforce the rules, because not only are they the teacher, they're also the social worker um, uh, appointed by the state. But the thing is, is that you can't want this so much that you right. disavow who you are and your rights. And I've seen many mm -hmm. times when producers will go up to a mom and say, can we just do this one thing? Or we, can we go over this and whatever? And you, when you start doing that and you compromise yourself in that, you're hurting yourself, you're hurting your child, and you're also hurting the industry because these laws are put in place Social, whether it's the SAG laws or their welfare state laws, it's important. You can't want it so bad that you will allow people to take advantage of you, really. And, that's and you know, I, I think the really good point about not wanting it so badly because so many people get into the business and with this sort of desperation to do it. And the thing is, it is profession. And sure, it's a lot of fun and we all want to do it, but to you have to stick to your own personal integrity mm -hmm. and know where that line is about what you're willing to do and what's good for you to do and what you mm -hmm. want. And also, yes. whenever they ask you for a few more minutes, I just, in my years of experience, they always manage to get it done. So if you hold the line and you say, no, we've been here for eight hours, this is our legal limit, we're done they manage to find a way to get it done. So I don't want the pressure of you feeling like you need to always accommodate. There are instances where, okay, sure, maybe if they had 30 more seconds and, the, and everybody's fine, I just, there are some circumstances where sure, we can work through it, but you know, they can get it done. I've never seen where they haven't gotten it done. So Right. I feel like we need to take that worry away for parents as well. And, and I think yeah. what, one of the other things just to, to add is communicate. Communicate to your team. Communicate to your manager, to your agent, to your advisors, to your attorney. And if you communicate, you have professionals on your side who can help you. And, and the more information that your team has, then the better that you can be protected and you can have the information so that you know what's right, what's wrong, where, where someone's crossing the line, and where you're crossing the line. And one last thing in terms of how you get jobs, a lot of times producers can go to actors through actors access, which is the point um, when they don't necessarily maybe not have representation, or maybe they do have representation, but they're just doing things to try to get, you know, credits. So you'll do a job for no money or whatever, but it's still important to bring your manager and your agent into the loop when you're entertaining these kinds of jobs. Absolutely, you need to do, you know, independent films, school films, you know, small projects that only pay a very little, but the bottom line is that there's still ramifications. You know, you sign something in perpetuity and a year later, you're trying to get a commercial with McDonald's and you've already signed those rights or you, you know, get a big series and then something you did a while back ago that you didn't even know you signed away will interfere with it. So it's really important to always have before you sign a contract and Darren will say this, you'll be on set. I've had ADs ask someone to sign something that was incorrect, that were hours that were not correct. And you, before you sign anything, never be the bad guy. You know what? I would sign this, but my lawyer says that I can't sign anything without them. Or my manager says, I saw him. Let me just, you know, text them real quick, take a picture, send it to them. I'll get it back to you right away. And then it's you always have someone else having your back. We're here for you. We're here to protect you. And as long as you keep your team in the loop, everybody should be okay. And if they don't want them in the loop, then you have to know that there's something wrong. Yeah, no, these are all amazing points. Um, just two more things that based on what you, you guys said before we move on. I liked how you mentioned Kiana not suppressing it because if, if, you, if you're bothered by something or something is legitimately um, improper and the child suppresses it enough, it, it becomes normal. They don't look at that behavior as being improper. So there's where giving voice to the, to the team it right. gives the child some perspective that the team can say, no, that wasn't right. Or they might even adjust them and say, well, that was within the parameters. Right. 
Um, and one more thing, Chris, I was thinking how you can make a good reputation in yeah. being punctual on set, being reliable, following direction, things like that. Well, I, I think that that being a good listener is really, really, really important, uh, especially as a young performer. Um, if you go into an audition or um, a set uh, with the idea that I'm going to do what I want to do, uh, chances are you're not going to get called back. Um, and uh, as, as director, what these days, what I need is people are able to to come with an interpretation, an idea of of the material, but then be flexible and willing to listen and take direction. Um, and I think that 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 big thing of being able to respond effectively um, to a direction is really what we're looking for. And that cre helps create a really good reputation. We're like, oh yeah, I know that kid. They, uh, she can really do the job well. And, and the, the pair are easy to work with, um, you know, and, and that doesn't mean taking advantage and going past the eight hours or trying to break rules. It means that we know that we have X amount of time to get this done. And we need everybody to be on point during that time. Everybody can go out to dinner afterwards if they want and have fun. But while we're on set, clock is ticking, particularly in smaller independent production where the, the, the budget is a lot lower, there's not time to, uh, to waste. So if the talent comes in prepared and on point and following direction, we're going to be able to get that done in less time. And that's where you're going to make make good reputation points. Furthermore, being uh, knowing your personal integrity and holding that personal integrity dear to your heart about, about you know, like, I don't feel like I should be doing this or this, this really fits within my wheelhouse. That's, that's very important to know yourself well enough to know what you want to do and pursue those things. You don't have to do everything that comes along. Um, because there's plenty of people who want to do something that you didn't you didn't want to do, so and I think there's enough work to go around if you have. Uh oh, I think he froze. Chris, but I, I I like that you you know when you're talking about a child's reputation and 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 how they can keep them from tarnishing that, as well as what Christopher saying you know just making sure you have the integrity me being the advocate for the child's voice is, again, letting them know if a situation is uncomfortable, you know, showing up on time and showing up and, and doing your best. If you have a child that is uncomfortable or if they're upset or they have all these emotions and they're suppressing it and they're not sharing, then they're going to act out by not showing up on time or acting out with their, with their parents or their agent and not wanting to uh, perform the way that they can because they don't know who they can talk to. A lot of a lot of the kids I, that I've worked with will say, I don't want to upset my parents or I don't want to upset the agent or I don't want to upset, you know, the people that are meant to be, be covering them and, and be protecting them. So we really have to encourage the, the kids, you know, if you're uncomfortable, if you're not feeling, a, you know, happy about the job that you're in, then it is okay to say something to me without guilt, without shame or repress so that I can speak up for you. Because if not, you're going to suppress that and then you're going to act out on set. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's not healthy. Um, let's move on only because we're, we're probably got under 10 here. Okay. Um, regarding how to handle bullies or public scrutiny um, and prejudices, any, any thought on as adults, we never get really used to, you know, prejudices and these and these negative things. But for a child, it's even more difficult if they're analyzed by haters and 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 and, and they want to tear their 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 reputation down. How do you how do you suggest that parents and kids handle those situations? Well, I think first of all, the parents need to be monitoring. Um, you know, the social media, you know, kids under, you know, 16, you know, for sure, um, their parents should be, you know, overseeing that account. And then if things come up, I mean, there has to be the conversation about how, you know, human nature is. And sometimes out of jealousy, people will try to knock you down. 
Um, you know, I had a client who worked on a, a series and, you know, and really had some horrible bar body image by a, a castmate who was jealous and kept on being on them. And then it started, it created a situation. Um, and so, but again, what Kiana is saying, when things like that happen, you have to talk about it. And the minute that you talk about something and you take the onus off it and you help put it in the right perspective and only a parent can help that, only a manager, you know, can, but mostly the parent in that situation or a publicist, you know, that you have a conversation about why this is happening. And when you do, and you can throw a sense of empathy towards that person, this person must be without anything. They're striking out because you're an easy target. Have co compassion for them, move on. We know that this isn't true. And as long as you have the conversation, but if it's all happening and the parent isn't involved or there's no one monitoring it to make sure, then that's when the problem happens. Because ultimately, you know, people do things like that out of jealousy generally. And, you know, and it has nothing to do with that person, but, you know, it's a part of our nature. And I'm so glad that when I was in high school, these things didn't go on. Now these kids have this incredible responsibility yeah. in dealing with um, peer pressure on a global, pretty much level um, and it's really difficult. And so I think that, you know, it's really important to just communicate, you know, exactly what is reiterated with everybody. Yeah, I, good, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I was can I jump in well said. Yep, yeah, go ahead, Chris. Yeah, I wanted to jump in about peer pressure. Um, you know, I grew up as a, a kid uh, actor. I did a lot of commercials. I worked at Disney um, in uh, Disney character voices and you, even in, in in the voiceover department, there was a lot of jealousy going on with other kids and parents. And um, it's actually fairly sad, but I think that, uh, that, that jealousy exists, but it's kind of, it kind of is a thing. So I think that you have to, this goes back to knowing yourself mm -hmm. and knowing that you're enough, regardless of whether you get that job or not, or what happened. I think putting your value, your self value onto um onto what somebody else thinks of you is not healthy what is healthy is knowing that you did your best i remember being eight years old and thinking wow if i could just get one national commercial that my life will be incredible the rest of my life and you know what a few days later i booked a craft cheese commercial and uh, a few months later it was like 10 o'clock at night. My mom yelled from the other room, Chris, get in here. You've got to see this. And I jumped out of my bunk bed and I ran in and I caught my craft cheese commercial. And there I was. And I was really excited thinking, oh my goodness, like I just, I did this. And then there was a sense of let down, like, like, oh, wow. Like I thought I was going to be happy the rest of my life if I got this national commercial. But then I realized like there's so much more to it than just booking a job and what other people think of you. It's your own sense of self-worth that drives you to do your next project and what you want to do and what you have to say, what you want to create. That's more important than what even a director thinks of you or your peers um, is, is what, what's going on inside here. So yeah. you can avoid the jealousy by going, okay, if somebody's jealous, that, let them be jealous, but that doesn't affect how, it doesn't affect me. Yeah. I think it's also important to say to yourself that I am not my work. You know, what ha we have to deal with, especially with actors who've had some moniker of success, and then that show cancels. And then it's like this loss, like, oh my God, I've been a working actor for like two years or two seasons or whatever. And now there's this void. And then there's this, oh my God, when am I going to get the, the next fix? I mean, a lot of times well, you're not in school anymore. Your whole, your crew is like your, your world. And so it's yeah. really about the self maintaining a sense of self that I, I've continued to have friends, I've continued to do sports, I have other interests other than acting. So my self worth is not mandated by the work that I've done on set. And, and, and educate, I, I got to talk about education here really quickly, too. Okay, we just have to wrap in, in just two minutes. Um, but go ahead and mention something real quick. Chris. But the, the education, like staying focused on, you know, go, getting your high school done, going to college, what makes an actor marketable as a child is not necessarily the same skill that makes an actor marketable as an adult. So get your education. Yeah. 
I know we only have a, a second but to reiterate on the bullying online and, and things like that. You have to teach uh, children that not to internalize projection of other kids, that especially on social media, right? You have other kids that are going to be jealous, that are going to be quote unquote haters and have something negative to say, but you don't process that information internally as if that strips away at your self-worth. You have to have the confidence knowing that you are enough. You have to understand that your value has nothing to do with what other people say about you. And no's are a part of life. We all get that. We have to teach children how to process those no's and not take it as a, a kick to their self-worth, but a nudge to keep going and keep trying for more. Yes, very good. Thank you, Kiana. And thank all of you. There's so much that we could we could talk about the, the legal protections, making sure that your representatives are yes. bonded, like the Young Artist Academy has the Krikorian bond and child performances uh, services permit, things like that. There's too many shady people in the industry that you can protect yourself simply by insulating yourself with a good team like wow. here. So um, wonderful advice each one of you gave. Would love to have you on another panel where we can explore these topics even further. So thank you so much for participating in the Young Artist Academy Disabling Dangers panel. And now we'll take a short break. Thank, thank you. you, Andre. Bye, Bye guys. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.